I have a clear and concrete proof why you must not add a kitchen soak away or kitchen and bathroom wastewater to the bio digester. In this video, that's exactly what I'm going to explain to you. So stick with me. The reason why I don't recommend adding kitchen and bathroom wastewater to bio digester and it's soak away. In other words, why you have to do a separate soak away for your kitchen and bathroom waste water. I once did a bio digester for a family who had a, a four bedroom house that's a standard family size property. And after two months of using the bio digester, I had a call that there's a lot of water in their backyard and that they're angry, they're disappointed in constructing a bio digester because it seems the digester is ineffective in managing their toilet wastewater. After an inspection was done, we realized that the kitchen and the bathroom wastewater was added to the biodigester and it soak away. After inquiring from the family, they told me that when the plumber came to do the connection, he then decided to add both the kitchen and the bathroom wastewater to the digester. After a few checks, we all came to the conclusion that the couple's five-year-old girl was in the washroom that's the bathroom and then had inadvertently opened the tap and left it open so the water had flown from the bathhouse all the way into the digester through the soak away and it has overflown this and filling the whole air house making the whole place wet when you construct a biodigester one of the first key things that I always tell you or I will always say is to do a separate soak away for your kitchen and bathhouse. There's a reason for that. Kitchen and bathroom wastewater is not regulated. So it means that wastewater from the toilet room, that's the water closet unit or the full flush unit are regulated. Whenever you visit the washroom, that's the toilet or the loo, and then you finish what you are supposed to do and you flush the unit, you cannot flush immediately again. What it means is that after the flushing of the unit, it will take time for the water to fill the tank again before it can be flushed. So let's say you have a kid who goes to the washroom and then decides to stay there and just play with the flash unit he or she is not going to be able to keep on flashing the unit over and over and over again because after one flash you are going to wait two or three minutes for the water to fill up again before you can flash hopefully in that moment you will be able to find out what's going on and then you can put your kid to order but in the case of a bathtub or a sink or a kitchen sink you cannot regulate it because if somebody goes there and mistakenly leaves the tap open the water is not regulated so all those water will just flow into the soak away and that will render the soak away ineffective that's why we say kitchen and bathroom waters are not regulated if mommy is washing the bowls or the dishes in the kitchen and mistakenly leaves the tap open the water will flow all the way to the soak away let's say you've added it to the digester it will flow all the way through the digester into the digester soak away and render the digester itself ineffective remember when we say we do bio digesters the most effective way or the reason why bio digesters work is because we separate the water from the human waste so by adding the kitchen or the bathroom wastewater to it you are virtually rendering the digester from working to its full capacity that's why we always recommend a separate soak away for your kitchen and bathroom water because those waters are not regulated and can be mistakenly left on and then it will overflow the sink or the tank and then cause a whole lot of problem in your backyard most people will always recommend you putting those water in the gutter or doing an overflow tank that connects the pipes in into the gutter so that there is a continuous flow of the water so if there's a mistake by anybody in the house or the kitchen tap is left on or the bathroom tap is left on or the sink is left on after somebody brushing their teeth or washing their hands then those water will just go into the soak away 
get to its overflow level and then will seep into wherever it's supposed to go but if you do construct a biodigester you know you are in safe hands because in the morning when you wake up after visiting the toilet and you flush it will take time for the water to fill the tank again before it can be flushed so then that gives room for the biodigester itself to separate the water from the human waste for that water to go into the soak away and still wait for the subsequent one that will come so if there's four or five family people living in the house and we are all going to use the toilet each system will take its own time for the flush unit to get to the digester and then pass through the system and in the process giving the digester a briefing room to work well so my recommendation to those who are interested in the construction of a biodigester is that a separate soak away must be done for your kitchen and then your bathroom wastewater in that process in that way you are going to have that needed peace of mind that you need in terms of your toilet wastewater management and for biodigester constructors insist on having a separate soak away done for the kitchen and wastewater <music>